Hi there, this is Karim Habibi from Keeper's Nursery and I'm making a short video about hand pollinating some apple blossom flowers. So today is the 8th of April 2024. As you can see, some apple trees are now in full bloom. Some others, um, like this one here, this is a star crimson. So this is like a red delicious. This is not yet in bloom at all. Um, and this one right here, this pine golden pippin, the, um, is, is a stage behind. So this will probably be in bloom in a few weeks time. But this Gravenstein here, which is an early flowering um, apple tree, so it's in one of the early pollination groups, this is now in full bloom. And the weather's quite good today, so it's above 15 degrees, so it's quite a good day to actually hand pollinate your flowers. So about a week ago, I collected some pollen um, and the way you do this is, um, so on the tree here, on the flower here, there are, so hopefully my wife will zoom in the camera now, there are some of these yellow anthers that you can see. In the middle there's the female parts, the stigma, and these anthers here, each one of these will, when it ripens, will turn a duller colour, like on this flower, so they'll go kind of brown, and that's when the sticky pollen is actually released. So if a bee visits the flower before the sticky pollen is sort of, um, well, before the anther ripens and the sticky pollen's there, um, it can pollinate the, um, the female parts. However, it won't pick up any pollen. Now what I do to collect pollen is at this balloon stage, you can pick off the flowers. Now this flower is no longer gonna be used for um, as, as a uh, seed parent, but it can be used as a pollen parent. You take off the petals and you then can easily just pull off these yellow um, anthers, pop them in a jar. After a few days, they will sort of dry out and you end up with loads and loads of yellow dusty pollen. So that yellow dusty pollen can now be used as a pollinating, um, uh, for hand pollinating and you know exactly which variety that's come from. Now with the flower, if you just try to hand pollinate this flower here, I can't guarantee a bee's not already hand, uh, well, actually pollinated that, not hand pollinated, but fully pollinated this. So if the, uh, if the bee's already visited this, then I won't know who the, the... Children, shh, guys. Right, I'll edit that. Keep filming. <laughs> so I will. Um, so back where I was. If a bee, okay, go to the loo. If a bee has already visited this flower, um, I will not know who the pollen parent is. I'll know who the seed parent is, which is still quite good for if you are trying to do a breeding program like I have done uh, over the past few years. The results of um, open pollinated. Um, apples has actually been quite good that's where you know where what the seed parent is but you've just basically left nature to uh, do its own thing so now I'm a bit more interested in actually finding out if it's actually better to have both parents and it should be so the way you would actually hand poll there are a few ways that you can hand pollinate uh, a flower without actually by guaranteeing that a bee hasn't visited the flower and one of the best ways is probably this so here as you can see, I've got this bag. Now this is a porous plastic bag. Um, I put it on before the flowers had actually opened, so whilst they're in the balloon stage. And now I know that this open flower here has not been visited by any uh, insect pollinator. So now what I can do is I can open up this bag, quite simply undo this sort of um, belt tie that I've got. Now, carefully removing the bag, so let me just open up this pretty little bag, which is reusable, and I will reuse this as well next year. So you don't want to damage the flower um, when you um, take this off. It caught on another flower. Brilliant. No, anyway, it's, it should come off now. One second. <laughs> okay, so now this has come off. 
So now here we've got some flowers that haven't been pollinated. A few of them are open, so I'm going to hand pollinate them. I was going to nick my daughter's uh, one of her paintbrushes, but she couldn't find them. So instead I'm just going to use a blade of ordinary grass. Okay, mummy knows where they are. So I'm just going to use some um, grass. Now the grass has now got some pollen on. This is the yellow stuff. I'm not sure if you can quite see. Can you see? No. Okay, well it has. So now what I want to do is pollinate these bits which stick out. And this is a relatively easy thing to do because the female parts, the stigmas, they stick out quite far. And it doesn't take much pollen to pollinate them. So you just brush these on. Brush, brush, brush. That's why they call it hand pollinating. Brush, brush, brush. Now I can even do this one which is sort of closed. And I don't want to pick up any pollen either. So you don't want to go in too deep, otherwise you're going to pick up pollen from Gravenstein. So I'm using Riker as the pollen parent here. So that's all done. I could probably do this one as well. Now, I'm not going to leave this like this. I'm going to put the bag back on. So hold on to the jar. Do -do -do -do. Put the bag carefully back on. Lock it up. Now I'm going to visit this flower, uh, well, this this branch again, a few more times in the next in the next few weeks to pollinate as many of these flowers as I can. We will see in the next few months how many of them have actually taken because if the if the flower has been pollinated well, the um, the fruit will start growing. So basically, you'll get a fruitlet, and that fruitlet will have seeds in it may have five seeds in it may have less it might have ten up to ten seeds and those ten seeds i will know will come from the pollen parent Riker crossed with gravenstein and um that's quite an interesting thing and then when you grow out the seed in the next year you'll have a seedling and you'll know what the cross is and eventually after about five years after you've grafted that you'll get some fruit on that tree as well and that will be an interesting unique new variety which one can create so here i've got about 600, 700 different apple varieties. Um, I could make, I don't even know what the combination of, uh, someone else could do the math, but there would be literally thousands and thousands of combinations one can do. And even if you do each cross, you're not gonna get the same parent, uh, the same offspring ever again either. So you could, I mean, the combinations are unlimited, what I could do. But I've basically selected about 50 different seed parents, um, and I've got pollen from the Riker tree, which fortunately is a very early flowering tree, earlier than the Gravenstein. So I'm gonna do all those crosses in the coming weeks. It's important to do it several times in good warm weather. And after that, these bags will stay on for about another month or so, once all the flowers have basic, once all the petals have fallen. And that will be time to take the bags off so that the actual branch can grow without this restriction on it. So thank you very, very much for watching. I hope that everything was captured quite well on film. I'm sure my wife's done a wonderful job. Um, I'm sure, sorry if the children appear in the video. I will try and edit them out. And if you have any questions, please do ask and I will continue to follow up on this video.